Hi everyone, it's Donna here from Norabox and I'm excited to share my 10 in 10 with you. You might ask, what is 10 in 10? <laughs> and it's this idea that in 10 minutes, I'm going to share 10 top tips about bringing your whole self to work. We hope this very quick mini session will inspire you and be quite informative as well. Please do keep in touch. I would love to hear what your top tips are about being your authentic self, bringing your whole self to work. But let's get started because I haven't got long and I've got one eye on the time. So I really want to get into this. So number one is all about um, being self-validated really. So we talk a lot these days, don't we, about self-validation. And I think in this context, it's really, really important when we're thinking about for ourselves as neurodivergent individuals. And it's the sense that our feelings, our experiences and our thoughts are valid and should be accepted and that we're worthy of respect. And I meet so many people who are still on a journey around accepting themselves as a neurodivergent individual. And that's why I think self-validation has got to be a real key part when we're thinking about bringing our whole selves to work. Equally, number two is really, really important as well. And it's this sense of community. It's a really exciting time across our neurodivergent community, isn't it, these days? Because lots of us are choosing to speak up and speak out about being neurodivergent. And in some ways, it's it's never been easier, really, especially with social media and the ways now that we communicate to find our communities in that way. There's lots of trusted voices, lots of trusted communities out there. So please know that you're not on your own. In this context about thinking about bringing our whole selves to work then, community has got to be a key part of that. You know, it can be about reaching out to colleagues. Networks are really, really important as well, whether it's an informal get together or something maybe a little more formal as, a, as an ERG. Uh, but those networks are really important. And it's about getting into the habit of sharing and feel confident and brave enough for us to share. And I think standing together with other individuals in our community can really make a difference. So that's my number two on this list. Number three is about doing your research. And for some of us, we're quite new into the neurodivergent family. Maybe we've only just found out relatively recently that we are living with a neurodifference in that way. And so it's important, I think, that, you know, we reach out to, yes, our community. We've just been thinking about that one. But also, you know, generally to do some research about what these differences are, how they can impact on us and really get educated. As it says here, and I love this phrase, knowledge is power. And I think having a good sense of ourselves, understanding how our neurodivergent difference can impact on us, you know, our areas of strength around our differences and, of course, some of our areas of challenge can really help us to become more confident to bring our whole selves to work. So number three is do our research. I think connected to that, and it's definitely a kind of on the same journey, is number four. It's about knowing ourselves. And I think from the knowledge and from the connections that we may make with others, it helps us to understand, you know, who we truly are around our neurodivergent differences in that way. And so, as it says here, knowing what we're great at, knowing our areas of challenge can really help us. And I think that's the starting point, you know, us understanding ourselves and then us to be able to self-advocate, for example, on our own behalf with our organisation can really help us to to get the best out of ourselves in the world of work. And for sure, it's certainly another key ingredient, another one of these top tips about bringing your whole self to work. Number five, I really like this one. It's about finding your safe space. And for some of us who are just on the beginning of that journey, or maybe we're in an organisation who up to this point, you know, we haven't chosen to share of ourselves. We haven't chosen to disclose in that way. Maybe it is about finding a safe space to do that. And although it talks about a space, and often when we talk about space, we're thinking almost geographically, aren't we? 
but it can be you know within a within a community so with others so the space can be you know when we're working with other folks as well it's not just all about thinking about almost this idea in a geographical um sense about what space is um so yes it's about finding that safe space with trusted people where you feel that you can truly be yourself and I think once we can start to do that, it kind of, you know, is a ripple effect across the organisation. Great for us, but also, you know, it can inspire others, we think, as well. So finding a safe space, finding a safe group is definitely a key part of bringing our health cells to work. I think as well, it's important, and this is why number six is such a really important one. It's about taking it one step at a time please don't feel you know pressurized into sharing of yourself if you don't feel ready but also if you don't feel psychologically safe to do so at this point as well so yes it's about finding your safe space yes it's about finding out who you truly are that self-validation self-advocacy but it's also then making sure that you take it at your own pace and I've had some people who've said to me over the years Donna I, I haven't shared yet I'm still on my own journey of self-discovery you know is that okay I shouldn't feel too guilty should I because I haven't shared yet and of course you shouldn't you know but it is about just taking it easy you know you might want to disclose to share with one individual at work and then again it's that ripple effect where then you might feel more confident to speak out and share of yourself in other ways so it's about making sure that you go at your own pace. This is your story and it's to make sure that you feel safe enough and confident enough to take that one step at a time. So that's my top tip number six. Number seven talks about you can't be what you can't see. And that's a phrase that we're all very used to nowadays. I, I love that phrase. And it's one that we're very, um, I think, kind of very knowledgeable, if that's the right word, about what we mean by that. And it comes back, I guess, to what I've just been talking about in number six in terms of finding your space, safe space. And that might not be an actual space geographically. It might be safe people, trusted people where you want to share of yourself. Now, when you do that, actually, what can happen is it comes back to that ripple effect in terms of, you know, you're showing up for other individuals as well as when you're confident to speak out. It's about being a role model for others, which, again, can really help for us ourselves, but also the people that we work with as well. But, you know, it's really important that we find our own role models as well because as it says we can't be what we can't see so having allies and role models across our organization can really help um, and if you can't really think of anybody who you work with currently who is a bit of a role model for you maybe it is about thinking about you know a favorite celebrity as it says here we can go bigger than the world of work maybe it's somebody else in your family in your friendship group so that you know we can really feel inspired and I think that can really help about bringing our health self to work um, and again in the sense about giving back playing it forward being there for each other this sense of community number eight talks about playing it forward supporting others on our journey um, and their journey and working together it comes back to this idea of community can really help us find our own path too and we know that there's strength in numbers isn't it we know that we're stronger when we stand together so by playing it forward yes yeah, sure we're helping other people but actually we're kind of helping ourselves as well so there's lots of benefits to that uh, number nine is a perfect one for this time of year so as I'm recording this it's October time it's dyslexia awareness time ADHD awareness time and actually celebrating awareness times whatever that means for you and your organization again is a great step in the right direction about encouraging us to be our whole selves our authentic selves celebrating these lived experiences whether that's for us ourselves if we feel confident enough to you know share our stories and again 
you know, we mustn't feel pressurised to do that. If we don't want to on a broader stage, you know, with other colleagues, that's OK. Uh, what we hope is our organisations maybe invite other speakers um, in to talk about their lived experience and that we share in different ways as well. I guess what it does when we do celebrate Awareness Times is it does raise awareness. It does help to start conversations, which maybe at other times of year we might be a little bit more reticent about having. That being said, what we don't want is a mere tick box exercise where awareness time means that everybody's talking about the you know, diversity, you know, at one, t at one time and then it gets forgotten about. We need to make sure that the energy and the positivity that we hope might be happening around awareness time carries on then right across the year. Um, and last but not least, number 10, if you don't ask, you don't get. And, you know, that's a really clear way of saying that we've got to make sure that we do you know, share of ourselves in terms of what we may be needing. What we hope, as it says here, that our employers are going to work alongside us to make sure that we get the support, we make sure that we have the infrastructure in, in order to bring out our best selves and our great strengths and really support us with our areas of challenge as well. But I guess this one also speaks of what we were talking about right at the beginning about self-validation and I've mentioned self-advocacy. And I think in order to self-advocate and make sure that, you know, we are able to articulate what we might need in order to be able to flourish at work and be our authentic selves, that's got to be part of our consideration as well, as we're thinking about all these different top tips that come together that really help us bring our health selves to work. So that's it. That was my top 10 in 10 minutes. I'm just looking at the clock. I think I've done it. That just leaves me to say thank you so much for your time. I hope um, these top tips were useful. Please do keep in touch. As I said, if you've got another top tip that maybe I've not mentioned in this 10 in 10, I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful awareness time. Please do reach out. Love to hear your thoughts. And let's make sure that we still work together as a community to bring out our best selves, our authentic selves, so that we can all bring our whole selves to work. Thank you, everyone.